Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be creating a sliding puzzle. So for this puzzle, I decided to make it Doraemon theme. If you don't know who Doraemon is, it's, uh, it's a Japanese character. So it's a blue cat. And you can find a link to this repo down below in the video description. So this is the image that we'll be using for the puzzle. And as you can see, I chopped up the image into nine pieces. So we're going to create a three by three board. And again, you don't have to use Doraemon. You can use any image you want. But for this tutorial, if you want to follow along and use the same image, you can download the repo using the link in the video description and follow along. So this is the completed sliding puzzle game. And basically, uh, the goal is to slide the images around until you get the original image. Now, the thing is, you can only slide with the blank tile. So the blank tile is on the bottom right corner. I can't switch these two image. I can only slide the image with the blank one. And every time you slide the image, your turns increment by one. So the goal here is to complete the puzzle with the fewest number of turns possible. So I can keep sliding and you can see it looks like we're almost done with the puzzle, except we need to somehow get this over here and get the belly down here. So it would require you to uh, keep sliding the pieces around like so until you can finally solve the puzzle. Okay. So before we begin, I just want to point out that I am working on a web project tutorial series where I create fun game projects every week. And if that is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. Also, feel free to check out my channel. I have tutorials on Candy Crush, Wordle, Sudoku, Connect 4, 2048, and so on. And there's going to be more to come. So if you want to stay up to date, please consider subscribing. All right, so let's begin. So if you decided to use the same images, just download the images and put them in your directory. So the pieces will be named one through nine and number 10 is actually the solution. Let's begin, create three files, index.html, puzzle.css and puzzle.js. So we're going to do doc type HTML, HTML, and we're going to create a head tag within here. I'm going to just do some standard HTML stuff. So we're going to set the car set to UTF eight meta name viewport. We're going to set content equal to width equals device width and initial scale equal to 1.0. And then let's give our page a title. So let's just call it slide puzzle. Now let's also link our style sheet. So link rel style sheet. href is going to be puzzle.css. Let's also link our JavaScript. So script source is equal to puzzle.js. And that's it for the head. Now let's work on the body. So the body is going to be pretty simple. We're going to have an image tag. We're going to give it the ID of title and the source is going to be dot slash logo dot PNG. So it's going to be this over here. And then let's create a div, give it an ID of board. So this is going to be our puzzle board, which is three by three. And then let's have a header. So we're going to have turns and within here, I'm going to create a span with an ID of turns and I'm going to initialize it to zero. So I'm going to use JavaScript to update this turns count using this ID of turns. All right. So now if you open up your folder and double click on the index.html, you can see this is what we have. Now the title image is kind of big, so let's use CSS to make it smaller. And let's also use CSS to show the board. We're going to give a width and height to the board. All right, so in our CSS, let's style our body. Let's change the font to Arial. 
and let's also do text align center. This will make all images and text align at the center of the page. And let's also change the font color to 0C67AE. So this is a bluish kind of color. Now let's also resize the logo. So earlier we gave it an ID of title. So to style tags based on ID, you do hash. So we're going to do hash title. I'm going to give it a height, not inherit, but height of 150 pixels and width of 400 pixels. And then let's also style the board. So I'm going to give it a width of 360 pixels and a height of 360 pixels. And I'm going to give it a background color of light blue so you can see it. All right, so now if I refresh the page, you can see our logo is smaller and it's centered. And we have our board over here. Now we want to center this board as well. So to do that, we're going to do margin zero auto. And let's also give our board a border. So I'm going to do border 10 pixel solid. And let's make the color the same as the font color. So this one over here. And then I'm going to add display flex and flex wrap wrap. So margin zero auto is going to center it and display flex and flex wrap is going to make sure that the tiles go from left to right and fill up the width instead of stacking in a single column. Now within the board, we are going to have image tags. Since our board is 360 by 360 pixels and we're having a three by three board, 360 divided by three would give us 120. So the width would be 120 pixels and the height would be 120 pixels. And let's also add a border of one pixel solid. And we're going to make the color the same thing. Now the thing is when we add a border, we are adding one pixel to the left and to the right. Now the board itself has a maximum width of 360. If we add a border, it's going to exceed 360. So we need to take one from the width and actually we need to take two because there's border left and border right. So we're going to do 118 and the same goes for the height. Okay. All right, so now if we refresh, you can see we have our board centered and it has a border that is 10 pixel thick. All right, so using JavaScript, we are going to populate all the image pieces onto our puzzle board. So first let's create some variables. So we have three rows and three columns. And I'm going to create two variables, one for cur tile and one for other tile. So cur tile is going to reference the tile that you click to switch with. And other tile is going to be the target tile that you want to swap with. So other tile in this case refers to the blank tile. And for the blank tile, we are going to use this image named three. So other tile should always be uh, the blank tile three. So let's also have a variable for turns. We're going to set it to zero. And then we're going to have an image order. So this will be an array. And for now, let's just use the solution order. So one through nine. So this is going to refer to the name of the pieces. So it's going to be one through nine. And when the page loads, we're going to call a function. So window.onload function. And this is going to populate the images onto our puzzle board. So we're going to do for let r equals zero, r less than rows, r plus plus. For let c equals zero, c less than columns, c plus plus. We're going to create a tile. So tile is going to be an image tag. So document dot create element image. So what we did here was we created an image tag. 
And now we're going to add an ID. So tile.id is going to be r.toString plus dash plus c.toString. And the reason we need this ID is uh, when we add it, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, like that. So it will give us the location of the current tile within our puzzle board. So our puzzle board is a three by three matrix, as you can see over here. So over here, this is zero, zero. This is zero, one, zero, two, one, zero, one, 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 two. So we need to keep track of the coordinates of our tiles. So we're going to use the ID for that. And the reason we're doing so is because when we swap, we want to make sure that we are swapping with the blank tile and the blank tile is adjacent to the image that we're trying to swap with. So I can't take this image and drag it over here. Okay, so we're going to use the ID to save the coordinates so that we can get the coordinates and do a check to make sure that the cur tile and other tile, they are adjacent. All right, so now after we set the ID, we're going to set the image source and we're going to set it to image order dot shift. So what shift does is it pops from the front of the array and we also need the extension. So we're going to do dot JPEG. So when we add the source, it's going to be something like source equals one dot JPEG. And then the next one is going to be two dot JPEG and then three dot JPEG and so on. And then after that, let's do document dot get element by ID board dot append tile. So what this line does is we take this tag and we insert it in board like this. And this gets repeated nine times because we have nine pieces. So by using JavaScript, we don't have to, you know, copy and paste this over and over again. So that's why it's easier to use JavaScript because we can use for loops. All right. So now if I refresh this, you can see we have our completed image. And again, number three is our blank tile. So what we want to do is scramble the order so that we can actually have a puzzle to play with. So I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to specify an order. And you might be wondering how come I'm not doing, you know, how come I'm not creating a random order function? And the reason is because, you know, there is a chance that you create a puzzle that's not solvable. So I'm just going to create a default order and you can change uh, the order if you want and create your own order. Uh, but for now, just follow along. Okay. So three is last and remember three is the blank tile. All right. So now if I refresh, you can see we have our puzzle. And now what we need to do is add some event listeners that allow us to drag and drop so we can slide the pieces over and try to solve the puzzle. So drag and drop is a multi-step process. So we need to add several event listeners. So for each tile, I'm going to add an event listener for drag start. And when it hears a drag start action, it's going to call a function called drag start that we will define later. And then we have another one for drag over. We have another one for drag enter. drag leave drop and finally we have drag end okay so what are these six steps well Drag start is when you click an image to drag. 
So as soon as you click an image, that is drag start. Drag over is when you, while you're clicking the image, you move the mouse, you're basically dragging the image around. So that is drag over. So moving image around while clicked. And then drag enter is when you are dragging an image onto another one. Right, so you're dragging image onto another one, you're entering that image. Drag leave is the opposite. So the dragged image is, it's basically over another one, but we when you do drag leave, it's basically, uh, you know, it's what it sounds like, you are leaving that image. And then we have drag drop. So when you drag an image over another image, and you let go of the mouse click, so you drop the image. And then drag in is after you do drag drop, what happens? You swap the two tiles. So that's what we're going to do for drag end. Swap the two tiles. All right, to show you what I mean by the multi-step process, if I click on this image, that is drag start. And then if I move it, that is drag over. And if I move it over another tile like this, this is drag enter. And if I move it away, that is drag leave. Move it here, that is drag enter. Move it away, that's drag leave. And this is drag enter. And here I can just do drop. And if I drop it, drag N will swap the two images. Okay? So again, drag start, drag over, drag enter, drag drop, drag end. Okay. All right. So let's define these functions. So we're going to do function drag start. And here I'm going to set cur tile to this. So this refers to the image tile being dragged. And then the next ones we have drag over. You don't need to worry about drag over. We're not going to do anything with it. So just copy this. Uh, don't worry too much about it. And it's going to be the same for drag enter. And drag leave. We don't need to worry about these three. We still need them for the drag and drop process, but we're not going to do anything with these functions. The only ones we need are drag start drag drop and drag end. So here, when we do drag drop, I'm going to do other tile equal to this. So in this case, this refers to the image tile being dropped on. Okay. And then afterwards, I'm going to do drag end. And here is when we swap. So to swap, I'm going to do let cur image equal to cur tile dot source let other image equal to other tile dot source. It should be a lowercase i. And then cur tile dot source is equal to other image. And other image dot source is equal to cur image. So we're not really swapping the positions of the tiles. Instead, we're swapping their images. All right, so now if I refresh, you can see I can swap. Uh, oh, okay, that looks wrong. Let's see. Ah, uh, this should be other tile. My bad. All right, so if I refresh, you can see I am swapping. And there's a problem, and that is I can swap with images that are not adjacent. So we need to fix that. To check for adjacency, we need to get the coordinates of the tiles. So this is where the ID comes in handy. So if you remember, we set the ID here to be the row and column coordinates with the dash in the middle. And this dash is important because it is the separator between the two numbers. So here we're going to do cur chords is equal to cur tile dot split by the dash. If the ID were zero, zero, we're going to split the string by the dash and get an array of two zeros. 
So now we can parse int these two values. So let r equal to parse int of curve chords of zero. And let c equal to parse int uh, curve chords of one. Okay, so now let's also do the same thing for the other tile. So other chords equal to other tile, not split. And then let's name it R2 equal to parse int of other chords, zero. And let C2 equal to parse int of other chords of one. Okay, so now we have the coordinates of both tiles. Now let's check for adjacency. Now to check for adjacency, we need to do a check for left, right, up, and down. So let's start with left, move left, and we're going to check to see if they are in the same row and C2 is to the left of C. So that means minus one. And let's also do the same for move right. If they are in the same row, and C2 is equal to C plus one. So it's to the right. Now let's check for move up. So in this case, it is same column and R2 is equal to R minus one. And move down is same column and R2 is equal to R plus one, okay? So now for is adjacent, we are going to do move left or move right or move up or move down. So if it satisfies any of this condition, that means the curve tile is either to the left, to the right, above or below the target tile. So here we're going to do if is adjacent. then we swap. All right, so now if I refresh, you can see, huh, okay, so it's not swapping. Let's see what's the issue. Oh, curtile.id, okay. Oops. Right, because curtile is the image tag, so we want the ID, which is this zero, zero here. Okay, so now we can see we can swap with the ones adjacent, but I can't take this and drag it here. That won't work, okay, because they are not adjacent. Now there's one more rule, and that is you can only swap with the blank tile. So we shouldn't be able to do this. Instead, we have to do this, like so. Okay, so let's check. So in drag end, we're going to make a check. So if not other tile dot source dot includes three dot jpeg so again three dot jpeg is the blank tile so we're basically saying if the other tile if the image name does not contain three dot jpeg we're going to return so we're not going to do any of this check we're not going to do any swapping all right so if i refresh you can see if I try to swap these two, that won't work. I can only swap with the blank tile, okay? So I can't swap with these, but I can swap here. All right, so the only thing now that we need to do is increment the turns. So here, after we swap, we're going to do turns plus equal one, and then we're going to get that span tag by the ID of turns which is over here, and we're going to set the text to turns, like this, okay? All right, so if I refresh, you can see the turns increment by one, and I can't switch with another tile that is not the blank one, okay? And they have to be adjacent. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you found the tutorial helpful, uh, please leave a like, let me know down below in the comments, and please consider subscribing.
And as a challenge, in my previous video, I created a simple puzzle tutorial where I had a 5x5 image and I split it into 25 pieces. So for you, I want to challenge you and uh, change this, which is 3x3. Three three. I want you to modify the code and make it 5x5 five five and use the images from the previous tutorial. Okay? So that could be a fun little challenge. And uh, yeah, if you know, if you manage to complete the challenge, uh, feel free to share the link of your repository in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.